This is Travis Miller and these are your Yielding Minutes. Summer of 2013 certainly turned hot and dry. Um, it was one of the worst case scenarios that we could possibly have is the spring of 2013 is wet and we planted a crop in wet conditions with limited root growth and also compacted roots and just all kinds of trouble there, late emergence and whatnot. And now our worst fears has come about to where the summer of 2013 has turned hot and dry and now we're in the midst of a drought. And it's certainly showing uh, stress on the corn plants as we are driving down the roads or walking through them and kind of trying to understand what's going on with these corn plants. It's extremely important for nutrient uptake for the top foot to two feet of soil to have a good moisture content so that the nutrients such as potassium or nitrogen can flow into the root system, the plant can uptake it and then utilize it. What we're seeing right now in drought conditions is that uh, soil moisture profile is extremely dry with limited nutrient uptake and the plants are starting to show it. As we can see here, this particular plant is showing extreme drought stress. What we're really looking for is where's our stock integrity going to be uh, when it comes to combining and that's something that walking fields here in the last few days I've really started to notice is nutrient efficiency within the plant and cannibalizing itself is going to cause us extreme issues with stock quality and diseases moving in on these plants. So overall in general, what we would normally see is natural synopsis to where we start seeing firing coming up through the corn plant naturally and maturing properly and getting to black layer and then we're combining a stock that's got good integrity and overall yield quality to it. And we can see that when a corn plant shows us both on one leaf, normally we can draw it right back down that we're having water issues or soil moisture issues. Um, nitrogen deficiency is when we start seeing the backwards V down the midrib of the corn plant. And then also potassium deficiency is where we start seeing the outside edges move down the corn plant and starting to dry out and wrinkle up. This, these corn plants are showing both because they can't uptake the nutrients through the soil so they start cannibalizing themselves. When we see the styrofoam tissue within the corn plant that's showing us that its nutrients are being taken up from the fatty storage tissue within the plant taken up to finish out our ear. Now this will naturally happen but with drought stress and the conditions that we're running in right now, we're seeing this happen um, extremely fast. And then we can start to see that it will progress downward towards the crown root as we pull those nutrients up towards the ear. What happens, unfortunately, before black layer, if this happens before black layers, we'll have stock integrity issues. We'll start seeing diseases move in, we'll start seeing the cannibalization go too deep eventually causing a weak point in the plant and then a wind comes through and we're going to start seeing our corn fall over. It also invites uh, root rots to come up and through the corn plant or in or a crown rot. We can see in this particular case with this root we're starting to see some blackness start to move up from the crown and starting to see some crown rot move in because this particular plant has cannibalized itself so deep that there's no natural barrier to keep these diseases from moving in. In a normal healthy corn stock, what we'll end up seeing is some nice gleaming tissue or transparent tissue that's still moving water and nutrients up through the corn plant. What we'd like to see is a natural barrier between the fifth node and the sixth node and having this transparency all the way to black layer that gives us that natural barrier from stock rots and root rots and crown rots to move up and into the corn plant and affect our stock integrity. So naturally we'd like a little bit of cannibalization to happen towards black layer but overall, in general, we'd like to keep the, certainly between the 5th and 6th node and the 6th and 7th node, we'd like to keep that transparent to keep a natural barrier there. That shows us that we've made it to black layer and had plenty of nutrients. What we uh, have been finding out over the last couple years with some tougher uh, late summers and drier conditions is that kernel depth can certainly be affected when we get into conditions that we have low moisture and nutrient stress to where the, the plant itself will start off with a nice deep kernel and the next thing we know we shrink down kernel depth. We could go out there and look at an ear and see that it looks beautiful and we think there's some pretty good yield there and then we open it up and understand that our kernel depth's just not quite there because we lost it. The plant just did not have enough moisture and nutrient uptake to keep that kernel depth where it originally had it so we've lost yield potential there.
This kernel's close to black layer, and this one's got a little ways to go because of different planting dates, but it's an easy way to indicate, you know, where our potential is and where it ends up being on a kernel depth-wise. So the summer of 2013 certainly brought on a lot of stress with the drought conditions that we're moving into, and a lot is nutrient uptake within the corn plant. So what we want to do is get out there and do some push tests to see if our stock integrity is starting to uh, diminish, and then eventually using that to plan your uh, harvest schedule. So this is Travis Miller with your Yielding Minutes.